Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm Reva with Quality Sewing, and today we're going to make a double zipper project pouch or whatever kind of pouch you want it to be. Now, in previous How Do I's, we have done project pouches, and these are the ones that we did. We did just a basic single zip project pouch, and you can catch these on our website and on our um, our Facebook page, you know, YouTube channel, all those fun things. And so we just made a bunch of different ones here, but this one's gonna be a little bit different. It has two zippers. So the first, the one on top is for the whole section here. And so that's good for uh, your main project bits. And then this one is smaller, it's just shallower here and so this way you can keep tools and things like that so what I like to use a project pouch for is if I'm working on let's say a quilt and I don't have the ability to go and keep it out all the time I want to put it away it's good to have a project pouch that's big enough for your um, block so if I had a 12 inch block I would probably want my finish size to be close to 14 inches. The reason why is that way you, there's some area on the side so as you fill it up, you can still get your all your stack of blocks in there. And then this little guy, you can use this for putting your cut pieces in. So if you have you know all the little bits and bobs that go for that block you can put the loose pieces in here so that's just kind of an idea there so let me show you what we need to make this little bag and i'm going to set him right there okay so you have two pieces of whatever size you want your bag to be so if i wanted my bag to be 14 by 14 finished i would want it to cut 14 and a half by 14 and a half so i had my seam allowance, assuming you're gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. You're gonna want two pieces of that, and then you want your two pieces, this one right here, two pieces for lining, okay? So then I'm gonna set one of the tops and the two linings away, because then I'm gonna take my second piece that's this size, and you want to cut a bit off the top. You can do whatever you want. I did three inches and I guess since I said top I should move this around so it looks like the top. So this uh, on mine this is three inches and then this is my remaining. Okay and then I have another piece for my pocket lining that still is the 14 and a half by 14 and a half and it's folded right sides together and we're going to use that for the pocket lining. Okay so this is really easy um, and then we need two zippers. You can do package zippers or this happens to be the zipper by the yard and so you can do whatever works for you. Um, just know if you're doing 14 and a half inches here, you would probably want at least a 16 inch zipper, if not bigger, because you wanna be able to have things out of your way. This is an, I cut these at 18 inches, so they're they're extra long, um, but that's that's all, all fine. Um, the zippers that you get from the store that are packaged are generally a size three, a dress zipper is a size three. So if you're gonna use that type of zipper, you're gonna wanna put a zipper foot on your machine. These are a size five, they're more of an upholstery or a bag uh, making um, type of zipper. They're bigger and they have wider uh, fabric on the sides, so I, I'm not gonna use a zipper foot today. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this piece right here, my little top piece, and I am going to uh, move my zipper all the way. I'm gonna zip it all the way to one end. And I have it so when I pull it, it unzips to the right. That's the, you can do it any way you want to, but that is the typical direction to have your zipper open up is to open it to the right. So I'm going to take my zipper and I'm going to put it right sides down on top of, let's start, we'll start with this, the bottom piece first. Um, I'm going to put it right sides down on top of my edge up here. And then I'm going to take my pocket piece right side down, line that up 
right there. And then you can take some clips if you want to or pins, whatever makes you happy. I like clips because they're faster than pins and they also don't distort like pins can. And maybe that's more me using the pin. And I will say that the fabric that I'm using for the outside, this piece, I've fused some fusible fleece. This is the OSD Fusion Fleece. It's a really lightweight fleece, but it gives the bag some body. You can use any kind of bat uh, batting you want, and then you can quilt it if you like. But I just fused it, and I didn't do any quilting at all. So I'm going to take this, and now I'm going to stitch this on. And I'm going to run the foot, the edge of the foot is just going to run right next to the teeth and that's going to keep it nice and straight for me. So I'm just going to stitch these together, all three layers, that's my zipper and my bottom and the lining. And we're almost to the end. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch this so it looks really great. So when you top stitch, you're going to take, I'm going to move this, I'm going to press this really quick. I'm going to take and have my layers all the way they're supposed to be, just the zippers out the top. And I'm going to just give it a quick press so that way everything is laying nice and flat. And then we're going to give it a quick top stitch. Okay, so now when I top stitch, I'm going to run a stitch about an eighth of an inch right inside our seam line there. And I'm going to have my zipper go away from my foot. So I'm going to actually do it this way. And let me show you what I'm going to line up on the foot. This is using stitch number one on the machine, which is a, the needles in the far left position. And so when I do my top stitching, I'm going to kind of run the edge of the fabric right on the inside of this silver toe here. And then that will be a nice guide to pay attention to. So that way I can keep my top, top stitching kind of straight. Another thing that you might want to do, and I've already done this, is um, put your stitch length on a little bit of a longer length. I have it at three and a half. And that looks really good for a top stitch. So a short stitch length, like a two or two and a half, it just doesn't really look great for a top stitch. So this is really nice. So we'll do that and let me show you what that looks like. So there's the top stitch right there. So now we're ready to go to the next piece. So back over here to this side, I'm going to take my top band and I'm going to put it right on top here. Okay, so it's right on top of the zipper. Then I'm going to take the lining, and let me clip that into place just for a second, just so it holds it. Then we're gonna take our lining, and we're gonna bring it up to meet the zipper, right there, okay? So now we have the zip, the bag lining right here, the zipper, and then the little, the little top band all right together. And I'm going to clip those again because I had it off. Did you notice that when I went to the back side there, you could see that they were not lined up correctly. And then I'm going to take the last one, line it up. And then we're simply going to stitch this into place as well. And I need to relax this a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now we're just going to do this give this a stitch, a quick, again, I'm running the left side of my foot against the teeth of the zipper, which is keeping it nice and straight. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip, I think we're still over here, yeah? So I'm gonna just flip this piece up. We're gonna leave this facing down. We're just gonna flip that one piece up, the outer piece up, and we're gonna give that a press. Okay, now we'll give that a top stitch. So the seam allowance is gonna stay, the seam allowance is gonna be, the zipper is gonna be facing up, and we're just gonna give this a quick top stitch the same way that we top stitch the other piece and giving it a nice top stitch just really helps make it look a little bit more finished 
and you can stitch at a slow speed if that's what makes you comfortable you know stitch at the speed that you like to go okay so now we have that top stitch we're all ready to go so now what we're going to do is we're going to just stitch really quick down the sides to hold our pocket in place so i'm just going to give it a quick little stitch down the sides that will just make things easier when we go to put in um, put everything together to have that all stationary. Okay. Okay, so now that we have our pocket in, we're going to treat it no different than the other piece, uh, just as a solid piece because it's all together. But what I am going to do real quick is I'm going to true this edge up. So I'm going to come over to my rotary mat and I'm going to align my piece here and just trim this off. Now this is a nylon zipper. Don't do that. Don't ever do that with a metal zipper. You don't want to do that. But this is a nylon zipper so you can just cut right through it. It's perfectly, perfectly good. Okay, so now we have this piece. So now what I want to do is I want to in, start installing the other zipper. So I'm going to again, I'm going to pull my zipper so it's out of the way which is really nice if you're working with a longer zipper so you don't have the teeth and the pull in the way. So we're going to set that on top of right side down on top of the front piece. And then we're going to take one of our lining pieces and we're going to set that right on top of that. Okay, and we'll clip it into place. All right, then we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're simply going to stitch this together. Now, if you have a function where you can um, stop with your needle down in your fabric, you might prefer to do that. That makes it really easy to adjust your hands and work on your fabric and keep things exactly where you want it to go. It's always a bummer if you're sewing and you stop to adjust something and then you end up being off. Nobody likes that. Okay, so now we have that piece, so guess what we're gonna do? That's right, we're going to top stitch it. So we're gonna open this side up and give that a little press. And then we'll flip this this way and press this piece as well. And then we'll top stitch it. And this is going to be the very top edge of our bag. It's going to be really, really great. So move my little clips. And again, I'm using the inside of the left toe as my guide for the distance for how far I want to be away from the edge for my top stitching. All right. Now we're simply going to put on the back piece and then we will do the same thing. So I've got this one. So now I need, we've got this all stitched together. Looks really good. So now we're going to take our back piece, lay it right on top and then we'll flip it over and put our back lining on right sides together. Lining those up. Okay, and then we'll clip them into places in a couple of spots. And I am making, what I'm making right now is, it's gonna be about finished about a 14 by 14 inch bag. So that way I could use, uh, put a 12 inch block in it for storage. I don't know about you, but I sure cannot get to all my projects all and get them all done right away. I have to store them. So, um, it's kind of fun to make a bag. And if you've already cut out all your pieces and you have extra fabric, you could always use some of the same fabric that you've ma you're making your quilt out of. So that way you know exactly which project is in it. So I have the outside, the big part of the, 
the big pocket area here is large enough to fit my 12 by 12 block and then the smaller pocket that we made first will hold all my little cut pieces for the quilt or you could use it for other things as well okay so now it's time to press that up. So if you like to do um, cross stitch or something like that or um, other type of needle art, you, you could use these for those projects too. So whatever kind of project you want to use this for. And then I'll show you an alternative how you can turn this into a different type of bag like a makeup bag. Okay, so now we have this ready to go. We're going to do a quick top stitch on this. And then I'm going to show you how to put it all together because we're in the home stretch. Let me get this out of your way here so you can see. And if you pre-cut out your pieces and you make these, these would make great gifts for um, like if you have a retreat coming up and you have friends that you want to make things for or for the holidays or birthdays you can just make a bunch and have some on hand for your next projects and also for uh, gifts if you want to okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch this whole thing together so this is where we get some magic that needs to happen the first thing we're going to do is open our zippers and look at that i sewed right cr across my zipper so that's when you get out your handy dandy little um seam ripper when i stitched down that pocket do you remember when we did that i stitched basted this down i went right over my zipper tape that was silly so you don't want to do that part but that's okay we can just take out these stitches um, not a big deal but you can't open it if you have stitches across it and you can't open it afterward if you cut it off so there there we've got that in the middle and we're going to put this one in the middle so now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to stitch together the outsides together we're going to line those up and we're going to take the lining and get them out of the way. So let's line up the outside of our bag. Now, one thing that you will want to do, depending on the size that you're, that you're making, is if you're just making your bag and you don't know exactly what size it's going to finish out at, you're going to want to um, a construct the front with the pocket and then compare it to your back side and make sure they're the same because when you cut it apart and you add the zipper in there it changes the length of it so I've already trimmed mine but you'll want to trim yours and get it all set to the right size okay so now I'm going to come up and meet these pieces up at the top See if you can see that. And I'm going to match them and we're going to stitch, uh, clip this together so we can stitch around it as well. So I'm just going to put one in here and I'll put one here and then we'll go to the other side. And the other thing is that this is very forgiving so you don't have to stress over anything. Okay, this guy looks a little lumpy, so I'm gonna grab him. Okay, so now let's talk about the zipper. I'm gonna have you come over to this other camera here because I wanna get in really tight and show you this. So we have our top, the outside, and here's our lining. Then we have the middle, the top zipper. When you're doing this, you want the seam allowance for the, um, the seam allowance that's right here going toward the lining should be the seam allowance should go toward the main bag and the zipper should fold in half with the zipper teeth toward the lining see how it's coming and going like this comes around we don't want to stuff it down in and go backwards we want it folded in half favoring the outside of the bag so the outside just has a nice smooth loop and then we have the zipper into the um, the lining and we're going to clip that into place the reason we want to do this is we want to make sure that the zipper is on the outside of the finished bag not on the inside okay so we're going to do the other side now this one's just a little bit different because it's already unzipped so what we want to do is make sure the seam allowances are going down and that the zipper tape aligns with each other because you want it to be even. 
and then we will clip it in place. So that's really the a place you want to make sure that everything is lined up is when it comes to that zipper. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start sewing at the bottom of our lining and we're going to start sewing about here and we're going to go all the way around all the sides and stop right about here, leaving an opening in the lining for us to turn it right side out. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch and then I'm going to do a back tack and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to stop just shy of my seam allow my edge of my fabric so I can pivot and then go around the bag and I'm using the marking on the bed of my machine for a consistent um, uh, seam allowance okay let's see what I've got here okay try to keep my hands out of the way for you and now here I come up to the the zipper and I want those the tape to match so I'm going to kind of hold it here and go over it. well gee whiz I broke a needle isn't that fun usually that doesn't happen but it will if you're on camera so we'll just change the needle real quick and let me grab one always have an extra needle on hand did you see how the machine kind of did a little vibration and it was a little bit of a shutter? That's actually a safety thing that it does. So that way you're not um, cranking on the, that's too small, um, that you're not putting too much pressure on the, um, onto, I'm looking for my screwdriver. Oh, here it is. So it doesn't, it doesn't damage the machine. So it will just go right. It will, it keeps it from damaging the machine. Okay. So there we, there we go. Screwdrivers are your friend. All right. There we go. We'll be back up cooking with gas here in a minute. Okay. So this, this machine actually does have a really great needle threader. So let me make sure it's down and in the right spot. There we go. All you have to do is push this lever on the side and it's threaded. Love that. Okay. Let's see if I can be a little bit more gentle with it, right? Oh, yes. There we go. I won't go so fast. I'll be a little bit kinder to it. Okay, got over those teeth. Even though they're nylon, you guess you really do still have to be careful. Okay, so we're just going to zip around the rest of this. And again, we're going to pivot at the bottom. We'll um, stop our seam allowance distance from the bottom. We'll stop there and then we'll pivot. And this is where if you have the... Um, needle down function if you want to turn on your needle down function that's really handy get my corners lined up there isn't live tv fun okay so we're going to come around now here's where you're really going to see the benefit of us having basted this down is when we come back around we don't have to worry about that pocket getting in the way or getting pulled up or um, kind of displaced a little bit okay so now we're back up to our top zipper and i want to keep those lined up and I don't know if you can see, but I kind of have my seam allowance going the wrong way. So I'm going to raise my foot and put it underneath the toe. That happens very easily. Okay, now we're home free. Get these lined up a little bit better. Okay.
And then I'm just going to sew a couple of inches and then I'm going to do my reverse. Okay, so now let's get this guy turned right side out. So we're going to come back over here to the other side and I'm going to trim my corners. So I, we want to remove the bulk from the corners. And if you want to, you can do a little bit of a double, like a beveled trim. And what that does is it removes even more of that bulk from your corners. Here we are on the side. We're going to cut off that. Now make sure before you cut it off, you make sure you have no zipper head in there because you don't want a zipper head in there. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing with this corner. And this corner. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we have this hole right here. And before, actually before we... Um, stitch it shut or we before we turn it I'm going to take this and I'm going to take my seam allowance and turn it down like that and I'm going to give it a press and this will help me in a minute because it will help me have a straight edge when we turn it right side out and we want to finish up that hole so now I have that seam allowance is open I'm going to put it down and I'm going to fold this back right on top of it so I have a nice straight line and it's all pressed. Okay, so now we have. Yes. Good question. Can we turn the the bag through the zipper as opposed to the lining? The way this is constructed, there's no access to those zippers because the pocket covers it and the lining covers it. But we are going through the pocket and through. I'm sorry, through the lining because we left that zipper open. So I'm gonna reach in and here's where the zipper is. I'm inside the zipper. So you're kind of having to do both, but you still need the hole in the lining. And then I'm gonna grab my corners and we'll pull it out. And now we have our bag turned right side out. Dun -da -da. And I'm gonna put my hand in and I'm through, I'm in the hole of the lining and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna poke out my little corners and get those looking kind of nice. Okay, and then we're going to come back and we can poke. Let me go back in. I didn't do the top corners. Got to do those two and see how nice that looks with the zipper is coming out because we we put it in that certain way. And so that's all good there. We look great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my um, my lining and I'm going to put my pieces together and you can pin it, you can clip it, you can do whatever you want to, but I'm just going to stitch that shut using the straight stitch. You can hand stitch if you want to, but I'm just going to stitch and I'm going to run a little back tack right there and then find where my hole ends and just stitch across. And since it's in the bottom of the bag, you're really not going to notice it. Now, what I meant to show you and I already closed up my bag. Um, is that, we'll come back over to this side, before you close it up, if you wanted to make this more like a cosmetic bag, from the inside, you can, right sides together, you can stitch across here, and then that will give you a chubby bag, like a cosmetic bag. Okay, I just left them flat because this is a project bag. But I'll let me show you. I'm going to put the lining together with it, and I'll kind of show you how it would look if you did that. But let's let's do this first. We'll finish up our project bag. We're going to zip it all shut, and then we'll just give it a quick press, and then we'll look at our alternate way to make a cosmetic bag, which I think you might actually really, really like. Okay, so there's our project bag, big enough to hold our 12 by 12 uh, inch squares. And then you can have a whole stack on them because we made this 14 inches wide, so it can actually get, it can grow with it. And then we have the small pocket here that holds other pieces. Okay, so now let's talk about if you wanted to turn this into a cosmetic bag or another bag. So you would have your pieces separate. I wouldn't recommend closing up the lining like I did, but you're going to turn it right, put right sides together, which we have the line, the right sides together and the lining would be separate. And then we, you know, why don't I just open up and show you? Is that better? I think that's better. 
It won't take me but a second. You guys want to see that, right? I hope you do. Because who doesn't want to know a, another trick? Okay. So I'm going to come in here. Let me get them open a little bit so I can get in here and just zip them open. Okay. So let's do this the right way. What do you think? Okay. So now we have this. We'll put it back right sides together, I said, right? So we want to have him, before you turn him right sides out completely, and this is even, you don't even have to clip the corners if you do this. Okay, so we're going to have right sides together, and I want to make this about, well, we'll see. What you want to do is see, can you see how this is the flat part, right? So I'm going to separate my layers, and I'm going to put the seams, this seam and this seam are going to line up. So they're right on top of each other. And I'm going to clip this into place. Okay, and we're gonna do the same with this side here. I'm gonna pull those apart and have one going one way. And I have the one seam allowance going one way, the other going the other way, and I'm gonna nest them together. And I'm gonna clip them into place. Okay, I actually have a friend who said she needed a new cosmetic bag, so maybe this will end up going to her. Okay, so then we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to put them right sides together and find the matching corners, and we're going to clip them into place. And I'm not going to make this one really deep. I'm going to make it, you know, a nice size that, that will hold things. But you can make it, if the deeper you make the seam, which I'm going to show you here in a second, the, the wider the bag base will be. Okay. So let's go back over here to the machine. And if you have, um, you can use a ruler if you want to. And you can mark how far up you want this to be. So if I wanted my bag to have a two inch uh, depth, I'm gonna come up one inch. And I'm gonna mark that. I'm not gonna mark that because I just dropped my pen. Okay. Okay, so what I did is I lined up the, the line of the ruler with the stitched line and I made a mark. So we'll just do that on the other side as well. And I just have it going to the inch mark. Okay, so now we're good to go. And so I'm just going to stitch across that with the straight stitch. And this one I do want to make sure I do a good back tack at the beginning and at the end. And now we'll do our other side. The other thing you can do if you don't want to, um, if you want to use something other than the ruler to mark your bottom, all you need to do is find a reference point on your um, needle plate and you can use that. So I have a one inch mark on my needle plate right here. So instead of marking my lining, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, align that with those with those markings. So I'm going to, not quite in the corner with this one, there he is. So I'm just gonna line that up with my one inch mark and just sew straight. And you just do wanna make sure that your side seam is perpendicular to the line you're stitching. Otherwise, go ahead and draw it if it, you're not comfortable doing that. Okay, that's a very good question of how do we determine what size to make the box corner. So it depends on, um, you know, you can kind of do a trial run, see how, you know, how wide do you want that to be? If I wanted my bag to be this wide, um, so if you think about like a shaving kit or a dop kit, it's usually about, what, about that wide, right? So if it was, say, six inches, I would want 
my I would want to be down from the point you want to be half that distance from the point so if I wanted six inches I would have come down three inches here and then my my end would be six inches so I've come down one inch on here so that means that my angle is going my my bag will have a depth of two inches I hope I hope that that makes sense okay so this time i'm not going to restitch the the um the hole for you but i'm going to go ahead and turn this right side out you can trim these off if you want to and for a little bag yeah i probably would if you had something that had like the big like a if you were doing a six inch your triangles might be big enough that you don't need to trim them they'll just lay nice and flat and they'll give a nice amount of stiffness to the bottom of the bag Okay, so out it comes. Boy, howdy. Does your sewing room look like that when you're doing stuff? I mean, seriously. Where are the fairies that clean everything up? You know, the, the shoemaker had elves, all that stuff, but I don't. Okay, so then we would sew up that hole, but now we have a nice little uh, bit of, of, you know, depth to the bag. So that's kind of a petite depth. So you might be happier if you did do a greater amount of depth. But anyway, that's how you would box the bottom. So you can make it a different type of bag. It doesn't have to just be a bag for your, um, for your sewing kit or for your blocks, but you could box your bottom and make it a cute little bag. If you made a different size, you could put a handle on it, make a little purse, whatever you wanna do. So there's lots of things you can do with something that's this easy to construct. So I hope you've had fun and I hope you make lots of fun things to keep your life organized. Again, great way to use up those scraps from projects that you've done. Anyway, we'll see you next time on our next How to Why.